The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. There's a teenager up here in the Yosemite Mountains of California who wrote this poem titled Tough Guy. It's by D. Collins. I'm a tough guy. I'm lean and mean. Just look at me. I'm in my teens. I know the language of the streets. I hang out with the guys I meet. If there's trouble brewing anywhere, you can bet I'll be the first one there. My name is known all over town. This tough guy ain't nobody's clown. I'm in. I'm tight with the older crowd, and I'm heard... Because I'm loud. Being part of the gang and accepted, you see, is the only thing that matters to me. To lie and cheat and steal now and then, it's no big deal. I'm cool with my friends, but wait. Are there others I'm failing to see who love me and care what happens to me? My mother, my father, and grandparents, too, are hurt and embarrassed by things that I do. My grandma and grandpa were once very proud of this handsome young lad who stood out in a crowd. But I don't see them as often as they used to come by. Could it be that I've changed... And I wonder why the friends that I choose are a mirror of me. When I look in that mirror, what do I see? A child of God looking back at me or a street-smart kid knowing wrong from right? I can choose the right path that leads to the light. That from a poem by a teenager here by the giant redwoods of Northern California. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? A child of God, a son or daughter of the deity, you are kin to the creator. Wherever you are on this planet, you are a son or daughter of God. God loves you as if you were the only person, the only personality, the only being in all of time and eternity, in all infinity. God loves you that much with an almost blinding affection, with a love which will not let you go. Clasp fast to that vision of yourself. For according to your faith, so shall it be to you. Then faith it till you make it. Live by this truth, and this truth will begin to live in your life. With vitality you shall know the truth, declared the Master, and the truth will make you free. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. But you've been given already so much, more than you've ever acknowledged, more than you've realized. There was a waitress one time in a coffee shop who stood there and watched a regular customer of hers as he put three heaping spoons full of sugar into his cup of coffee. And she remarked to him, you know, maybe if you would stir up the first spoonful, you wouldn't need the other two. That is true of life itself, of your very existence. It's not that you need more blessings so much as to appreciate the blessings you already have, a free will choice. Stir up your memories. Realize the sweetness of truth and beauty and goodness and love, the love of God and the love of others. There's joy in that. There's happiness in that. There's gladness, said the Master. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And he also said, I've come that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. God loves you this very moment. God has forgiveness and renewal, newness, and a future, a bright and promising future lying before you and lying within you this very moment. For the kingdom of God is within you if only you will dare to seek and claim it. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below, it is written. Praise him. Worship God, love God, and God created you for a purpose, and there's a satisfaction and a happiness and a sense of fulfillment in living out that purpose. There was one woman who wrote, When I was a little girl, I had a playhouse in which I hoarded up all of my girlish treasures. I had chipped dishes and old calendars, grown-up clothing like my mother's, and, to my great joy, she wrote a large wall clock, a wind-up clock, and best of all, that clock ticked. The pendulum swung back and forth. The works inside of it moved. The face still had numbers on it for all of the hours of the day and the night. All the parts were in good enough condition that they moved. This clock worked. But there was only one thing about it. The hands didn't move. The hands had later fallen off, so there weren't any hands on it at all. The clock did everything that I would want it to do. It was everything I would want it to be, except for one thing, and that is the thing for which clocks are made. 
It couldn't tell time. Well, even a broken clock is right twice a day. But that is small consolation to a person who wants to know what time it is. Those failings, however, were not serious, this woman wrote, to my childish mind. But since then, I've thought more deeply about it, she wrote. What a tragedy to live a life of motion and activity and moving and doing, busy all day and busy all night, but with no meaningful results. Thousands of men and women live their lives ticking, ticking away without being any particular use or good or pragmatic value in what they do, what they accomplish, what they achieve to the people around them, to the world in which they live. God created you for a good purpose, not only to know the ecstasy, the joy of loving and worshiping God and loving other people, but to do something worthwhile, to be somebody worthwhile. There is a plan for your life. There's something which you can do during your lifetime on this pirouetting planet Earth on which you dwell. There's something you can do which nobody else can do in your way, in your lifetime, in this point in history. You are unique. There is only one of you. Listen to this. Stare at this with your ears. Listen to this. There's only one of you in all this universe, and you are that one. There's only one of you in all this cosmos, galaxies, star clusters, at 186,000 miles a second, the speed of light, as light traverses nebula beyond nebula. There is only one of you in all of creation. As far as the speed of light can go in a trillion years, there is only one of you. Only one with your particular personality and proclivities and potentials, God-given possibilities. You can find the will of God if you will seek it in prayer, meditation, worship. But it does take time. If you eat food rapidly, you just bolt it down, the essences, according to some physicians and scientists, the essences of the foods are not released fully. In a similar sense, meditation is a kind of mental and spiritual digestive process. Pause at every promise of God for you in the teachings of the Master. Pause at that promise until God meets you there at that promise. For God will meet you at that promise. But the less spiritually you live, the less interesting spiritual things will be to you. You can become calloused to these things. This moment, as you're listening to this broadcast, somewhere in one of the 24 time zones on this planet, whether it's day or night, where you're hearing this broadcast, there's something that is intriguing to you. There's something that's kept you listening to this broadcast when you could have turned on and heard music or sports or news. But this is news. This is good news. This is that old spiritual truth which in your soul of souls, in your heart of hearts, you have longed so long to know, to feel, to experience. You were created by God and for God and nothing but God can satisfy that thirsting of spirit which burns like salt in your soul. The minds of some people are like concrete, mixed up, permanently set. They're not interested in questing, but there's something inside of you as you listen to this broadcast that makes you wonder about these things, that makes you hunger for these things, because you'll never really feel right in your life until you find God and find your place in this universe and your place in God. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato said, God is truth and light is his shadow. Think about that. One truth in your mind, learned in your mind, is worth a thousand books stored in your barn. Because truth is not just the dead remnant or the musty remains of something once alive. Truth is alive. It's not some piece of paper which you can press between the dusty pages of some old book of scriptures and keep it on your shelf. It's to be lived. Truth is liberating. You'll know the truth. The truth will make you free. And then it's to be shared with others. Some people don't give a penny, a prayer, or a pause to consider the needs of other people around this planet. And your love has a broken wing if it can't fly across the ocean. That's what radio broadcasting does.
That's what we've been doing now for 30 years with this spiritual renaissance broadcast. That has been our purpose and our plan. It is exciting. You can be part of that. The closer you come to the place of God in your life and dedication to the will of God, the closer you become to being involved in outreach to other people somehow. At every breath you take, there are people, there are men and women who perish somewhere around this world, never having heard once of the love of God and others, that they're sons and daughters of God, that there's forgiveness, there's newness of life, there's the hope of eternal life in joy and worship and praise of God, love for God and love for others. There are people who are born and live their lifetimes to an old age and then die on this earth, never once on this earth having heard this thrilling and spirit-uplifting and liberating truth. The fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, the sisterhood of woman, that you're loved by God. There's a purpose for you. The kingdom of God is inside you, that this is only the beginning of a great, joyous, vast universe adventure, eon beyond eon. And what right do you have, listening to this tape or listening to this broadcast, think for a moment, what right do you have to hear that twice when there are millions who have not yet heard it once? Really, truly, what right do you have to hear of the love of God, that God has forgiveness and newness of life for you and the joy of God? What right do you have to hear that twice when there are multiplied millions on this earth who have not heard it once? And if you don't believe in spiritual outreach of spiritual truth, then I would invite you to turn back in the pages of history, read of the life lived by your own ancestors, whomever they may be, from wherever they came, before teachers of truth reached them, Look at the kind of bloodshed and hatred and animosity and territorial fighting and bickering in which they lived before they heard of the gospel of the kingdom of God. And that word gospel, spelled G-O-S-P-E-L, I call your attention to the fact that the first two letters in the word gospel, G-O, spell go. And Jesus said, go into all the world and teach this truth. Be part of that. Do that in your life every day. And be part of that with us. Write to us, will you? I want to hear from you. As we begin our 30th year of broadcasting these transforming spiritual truths to the world, there is no more thrilling an enterprise than this. Be part of it with us in spirit and in faith and in commitment, write to us at Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI, the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. Write for the free literature, Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Life After Death. You have no need to have a fear of death. You can live free from fear. And that's the title of another one, Freedom from Fear. All of this literature, yours, no cost, charge or obligation, just write to us. Box 3080 Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that mailing address. Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.